Hi everybody, this is Ray from Empress in Power. How are you doing tonight? I, I tried to upload video on YouTube channel. I've been actually trying to do it for the last couple days and I guess with my cell phone, I just don't have enough storage space. It won't convert, so it won't let me, and I'll make like a 25-minute video or so, and it just washes out, so it won't process. So I, I decided to come on here live and <laughs> talk to you all uh, right now. Um, I posted some videos on my YouTube channel um, today, two of them that actually are older videos that I did mm, about a couple months ago, just talking about um, your heart and getting your heart right in Christ and truly um, being anchored in the Word of God and how uh, the Holy Spirit lives in you, how Jesus Christ actually lives in you and how He operates fully in you through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so I touched base on <clears throat> the importance of getting your heart right because the more you feed the spirit of God with godly things, the more can be born um, from those things as far as operation of the spiritual gifts, which empowers your life, which helps you sustain the blessings that God wants to give you. Um, <clears throat> It's not just in manifesting blessings, but it's in sustaining it. It's in living and walking and moving and having your being in God and um, fully living in the flow of his blessings, fully living as um, a true commander and in dominion with full authority uh, given to you by God in this earth. Um, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins to set us free but also to give us keys, keys to the kingdom. And these keys unlock the hidden treasure um, that is the mind of God and the heart of Christ. So the mind of God and the heart of Christ actually dwell within you. What we become, literally, if you know anything in the about the Bible and about the, the Israels back in the day is we become the Ark of the Covenant. We become the living physical manifestation of the Ark of the Covenant. So in biblical times, the Ark of the Covenant had um, articles of faith. It had the showbread. It had the commandments, the word of God. It had the staff of Aaron with the, even the little budded um, uh, new growth that just stayed there, sustained, green. Um, it, it had these articles that all represented Jesus Christ. And upon it sat the spirit of God. And that spirit of God, actually when it sat upon that ark, in the tent of meeting, um, the ancient Israelites um, said, and it's even said now to this day, if you go visit Israel, the tent would breathe. And that's why they called the Holy Spirit the breath. But actually, it goes back even further than that. Even in ancient Egypt, um, they dissect the soul into three aspects. And one of those aspects is the breath, the breath of life, the giver of life. And that is really, um, to be honest with you, what the Ankh, the symbol of the Ankh means. Um, if you look at all the ancient uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics and you look at the um, old... I don't even know why I'm going here with this, <laughs> but because that's not what I came on to say, but here it is. So you look in the old um, hieroglyphics and you look at the old uh, paintings and stuff on the uh, temples and the pyramids and everything, you will see um, the royals, 
the the royal Egyptians, the, the pharaohs, you know, the, the kings, the queens, the princesses. And you'll see like this big sun and there's streams of like sunlight, sun rays and the onk. And the onk on the end is like going towards their nose. What that represents is the breath of life of uh, the Holy Spirit. The power of God, the Holy Spirit, um, that is a is an ancient, ancient concept that has been around since the gift of creation. It's been around since the, the gift of being is almost what God is saying to me. The gift of being, the gift of being. Why do you say that to me? The gift of being. So the Holy Spirit is not a concept that Jews created. It's not a concept that Egyptians created. It's not a concept that religion created. God says that it was, it is, it always will be. And if you are a cre if you have been created, um, living here on this planet, you know. That's what he said to me just now. So, um, it's kind of weird. My life is weird. <laughs> but, um, I came, I came on because I wanted to kind of reach out. I'm feeling, I feel pressed in my spirit because of everything that I went through as from a young girl on, I was born with Christ fully living and dwelling inside me with the full activation of all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. I was born like that. I cannot remember a moment, not even as far back as three years old, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit weren't active in my life. Um, even at the age of five, uh, well, even go back further, the age of three, um, from the age of three years old, I knew how to read. Um, I just, I just knew I picked up a little workbook I saw laying under my mom's bed and I read it. So that was a gift of knowledge, uh, and then at the age of five, when I walked into um, the living room and it was around Easter time and they used to every year for three days before Easter, they would um, play on the regular TV station like ABC or something like that or CBS. And they would play the Jesus Christ the Nazareth story, the story of his life. And... I, you know, we would always watch it. Well, I remember walking in from school and it was on and my brother was sitting there watching it on TV and I started kindergarten at five because like I said, I could read at three. So it was discovered that I could read when I was four by my mom. And, um, of course she did work with me and things like that. But, um, when I came home from school, it was to the scene where Jesus was being nailed to the cross. And I remember I walked in, I dropped my book bag and my, or my lunch pail, really, uh, Hulk, Incredible Hulk lunch pail. I loved him. <laughs> and I walked to the TV and I knelt down in tears, amazed because I knew him. I knew him personally. I knew that he was familiar to me. He was somebody that I actually knew. It felt like I was watching someone in my own family. Like I knew him that well. Like at the age of five, that's the best I could relate it to you. It was like, oh, I know him. Why are they doing that to him? Oh no. And it it was like I was reliving it. I was reliving the grief and the pain. And I had a memory of being there at his feet and watching this. 
again, reliving this again. And so from a very young age, I had a lot of uh, supernatural experiences. And so it was, it was uh, difficult growing up in life um, like that with uh, all these supernatural um, occurrences and things that would happen in my life. And it colored my view and my perception about everything in life. Um, it, it truly was, uh, it made me feel isolated. It would make me feel lonely. I hungered, I hungered to find other people like myself because I wanted to understand more fully, you know, uh, what, you know, what all these gifts were, or I didn't even understand them as gifts, but why was I so different? Why did these things happen to me? Why did I always feel pressed to know more about the Lord? And I remember when I was eight years old, I went outside, I was playing and there's a big rainbow lit up the sky. You know, that's normal. Um, you know, after rain, we see it all the time, rainbows in the sky. But this time I heard a voice. And I know people say, oh, the Holy Spirit is supposed to be this soft voice that speaks to you. This was a loud, booming, commanding voice. And it was God. And God said, behold, daughter. You know, I've never revealed this to anyone before. So, Behold, daughter. I have sent you. I have sent you to preach the good news. I have sent you to tell my people, to tell them that I love them. And it, it was just something, it was, it was just remarkable. It, it was extraordinary. I remember the main thing is that he said he had sent me. And so I rushed into the house and I said, mom, mom, mom. God sent me. What am I supposed to do? What do I need to do? Tell me. He said he sent me. What did he send me for? Why? Why am I here? Why do I exist? And, you know, my mom gave me the Bible. She would give me Bible stories to read. So I'd read them and I loved them. I loved all the stories. My favorite one was about the Samaritan and, you know, how the, the people would walk by past that horrible, hurt, you know, um, injured Samaritan. They just ignore him, his own people. And then finally, a man of a whole nother culture that was, you know, they were completely diverse and they were enemies came and helped him. And, and you know, it taught you to be a good Samaritan, be a good neighbor. And just like Mr. Rogers, as a kid, I'd go around and say, hi, neighbor, hi, neighbor, because I want everyone to be my neighbor. And, um, but I just had this spirit of love and I had the spirit of giving and I really, really disliked lying. And I, I, um, I always felt righteously, you know, just, just indignation towards anything that was out of the light of God or that was, um, uh, like cussing and um, things like that. It just, it, it would vex me. And then as I got older, I began to uh, just spend more time reading my Bible. Not just reading little Bible stories, you know, that you, you would give to kids, like the little Bible story book, the golden book or whatever that you could get a hold of. And it would have all the colorful pictures and illustrations, but the actual Bible. And I would sit there and I would read it sometimes for hours. I would read it and I would talk to God. Um, because my, my brother was older than me, so he was usually like playing football or whatever. And I'd be in, in the house by myself and I would spend time with God. Jesus was my best friend. And the kids, of course, I didn't fit in with the kids um, because I was more spiritually in tune and aware. Um, it just seemed like I was older, like I was more mature than the other kids that um, 
they would come to me with questions. They would come to me to learn things. Um, and then if we played, I would always lead or direct. And it was always these expansive, creative, almost movie-like sets that I would create for us to do. Uh, but um, so I didn't always fit in exactly. You know, I didn't understand slang. I didn't, you know, I was I was different. And I really had a love for the Lord. I would beg my friends to take me to church. I would go spend the night over certain people's houses just because I knew they would go to church on Sunday morning because my parents worked. I was fascinated and I craved to know more and more about God. I couldn't get enough. I needed to know the truth. I wanted to answer why he sent me. And so it wasn't long after I had a dream I dreamt that God told me my father was going to pass in three years. And so I was I it I was kind of in shock about it. I didn't fully understand it. I was about maybe nine years old. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, so that's right. He died when I was twelve, cancer. So nine years old. And I ran around the house. Mom, when dad dies, can I have this? Can I have that? And I felt like I really need to claim certain things to be mine when my father died because I saw that people were going to all take everything. They were going to take everything from me and I would have nothing left of my father. And so I was like, you know, dad, when you die, I want this and I want that. And so um, they, my parents thought there was something wrong with me. Well... He and he did end up getting uh, he got cancer and he died and of course everyone took everything and I I didn't have anything um, of my father uh, to hold on to to treasure to keep so those things did actually come true my mom sold a lot of the he sold a doll that he brought me from World War II uh, in Germany um, the dollhouse that he made. Um, for me by hand she sold those things not knowing that he was going to get sick and die although I knew nobody listened to me um so those are kind of an experience um that I had very early of prophetic visions that were not always pleasant um it's not always a wonderful thing this old dazzling sparkly thing to have a prophetic gift um so because of that because of that uh and then also just having that desire to, you know, you need to live right. Oh, you shouldn't say those things. Um, I actually used to think that curse words were like the mark of the beast on, you know, and, and stuff like that. I just was like, oh, that's really bad, you know. And so I I, I was quite, you know, it, it made me odd. Uh and it was hard for me to make friends with other kids because I would see things spiritually. I could see demonic spirits. I could see angels. Um, I would, and yes, I had seen people that had passed away. Um, I would see these things and I didn't quite understand it, but it just seemed kind of natural for me that I would see these things. Later, as I grew up, I, because I still didn't quite understand why did I have these gifts. Um, there was a moment after my father died and I was very upset and distraught. And I just, I wanted answers. So I prayed, I talked to God. And I remember I sat there on the edge of my bed and I said, I demand answers now. And the light flooded my room. It was like a golden light flooded my room, filled up the room, and I saw angels, but not like their whole body, more like I just kind of knew they were angels. It was like they were more like light type images. They weren't like flesh and blood type, but they were kind of congregated above me, like upper, like an upper realm almost, but spiritually. Not physically, but spiritually. And they just began talking, but not moving their mouth. Just uh, It was telepathic in a way, I guess you could say. It sounds kind of spacey, but just almost like downloading. 
answers in it. As quickly as I could think a question, the answer would come. I would think a question, the answer would come. I would think a question, the answer would come. God's mind would just flow, flow into me. And I remember it when I started, I was crying. But after it, the session finished, I felt complete peace, calm, understanding, whole, healing. But oddly enough, I couldn't remember everything that I asked and everything they said. But I did have that peace. So as, so I, I just, you know, those kind of experiences I would have and, um, later getting baptized, uh, at 12 and, um, after my baptism, having experiences where literally kids, uh, would come up to me and, and say mean, horrible things to me. And I would say, you know, God says I should forgive you. And they would, they would, uh, this girl, her name was Thelma, literally slapped me in my face and she laughed and she said, ha ha ha, turn the other cheek now. And then her friend came up and she slapped the other cheek and said, oh, uh, now we, now we have both cheeks. Which cheek are you going to turn now? And, and laughed at me and laughed at my faith and and picked on me and beat me and uh, jumped me in locker rooms because of my faith. And so I experienced that after my baptism. I also experienced being raped um, and, uh, and, uh, and physically attacked and abused uh, uh, from the age of seven to 17 where different people in my life either physically abused me or molested me or rape, you know, touch, by touching me inappropriately or actually by the age of 17, my virginity was literally raped from me. And so my awakening, being born spiritually gifted and awakened to God and having like a fire shut up in my bones where I literally would take my dolls and set them in the living room to preach and teach them because I just had to teach. I just had to tell someone about God. Um, I would stop people like, uh, the little missionaries that would come through, whether it was the Baptist missionaries wanting to get all the kids on the bus to take them to church, kind of like how a lot of the mega churches do now. Um, or, um, uh, or the Mormons, or the Jehovah Witnesses, anybody, if they saw, oh, I had to talk to them. I had to talk to them about God. We had to discuss it. I had to ask them questions. If I went to church, I would haul up there to the pastor, and I would ask them questions. And I never saw a pastor or anybody like, oh, that's a pastor. No, it just felt like my brother or sister in Christ. I felt on equal foothold, on equal level with them, even at nine or 10 years old. And I just, you know, I would begin talking to them. We, you know, talk and I would tell them what, you know, what I thought. And they would just look at me like, what is this? Who is this? And so that, that had been my experience, um, you know, as a child. And because of that, I would search and search and search, trying to find people like me, trying to find an understanding of, you know, what were these gifts and why did I have them? Um, and as I searched, the only people that really came that I was able to grab hold of and say, oh, they're like me were like, you go on, uh, Google or YouTube, or whatever, and you'd find stuff about new age spiritism, uh, witches, psychic mediums and all that. And those were the people that said that, uh, that I was able to identify with, I could not identify with uh anybody else because christians especially back then they weren't talking about that you go to church and they they were talking about how you need to repent from uh saturday night and i you know lived my life purely i never lived my life in that way and so i could i couldn't um relate 
and I would just live my life, you know, I, I, I just had all these gifts and, you know, I'd lay hands on little animals, you know, that were sick and I'd pray for them and they get better. Um, one time I brought a bird back to life. It was, you know, I had a lot of experiences. And so when I would try to find uh, uh -huh. exactly what it was that, you know, was, you know, to identify myself, it was all these worldly evil things. And so I really came on here because I wanted to share some of this with you all. So if there are people out there that, Maybe we're born spiritually gifted. Maybe we're born with a little bit more understanding of God, uh, awakened to the Holy Spirit, able to talk to God and hear him. That if you didn't have a spiritual covering growing up, if your father wasn't a pastor and you didn't grow up in a church like me, I didn't grow up um, with that kind of uh, covering. Uh, so you didn't have any resources or people around you that could really help guide you. Um, people that caught the Holy Ghost in my church, they'd slap you, you know, knock you out. You're just jumping around and dancing. That's what, you know, That's that was the Holy Ghost back in those days. So there was no point of reference there. And, um, but there is now, there are resources. And I want you to know that Christ lives in you. It's Jesus Christ in you that is actually operating these gifts you know it's jesus christ and and the power of the holy spirit you become a literal living ark of the covenant you become the the literal um carrier of the spirit of god and if you were born like that um and you were born uh with a a, a fellowship and an intimate relationship with him and like me you fed that by spending time with him reading your word and praying all the time it's going to get activated and you will be attacked by the enemy you you know satan will come in and try to steal that gift will try to lead you astray will will physically assault you and attack you especially if you don't have a covering you don't know who you are in christ and you don't understand your identity and you don't know how to protect yourself by with prayer and um uh, by, uh, you know, uh, listening and, and, and truly, um, l taking the advisement of the spirit. So when you get the gifts of dis when that discernment kicks in or that wisdom kicks in, you understand that it's real. It's God speaking to you and you can, you can follow it rather than saying, well, is that just me or is that just my imagination? But everybody else says it's okay. So how do you discern? How do you hear from God? That's how you you know. By reading your word and lining it up with the word of God. So that you can stay safe and protected. And you can keep your gifts safe. You have to cover and keep your gifts safe. Because Satan wants to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. And he'll do everything to take you out. He'll cause all kind of trauma and havoc in your life to delay you, detain you, and keep you bound like that woman that Jesus healed on the Sabbath day and set her free. Um, he'll stall you away from your destiny by miring you in trauma and debilitating you with uh, the lies of the, the enemy in the world. So I just wanted to come on here and reach out to you and share a little bit of my life. I have to go. I got to go pick up my daughter from the movies, but I love y'all. Y'all have a blessed and Godful day. Goodbye.